Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So this is the second episode of my staying home with landscape photography and what I'm calling five in five. So five tips of things that you can do at home to improve your photography in five minutes. Probably not gonna take five minutes, but I'm gonna try my hardest. And today what I'm gonna talk about is, is color um, and how I use Lightroom to edit color and how important color is in landscape photography. <laughs> I want to say a massive thanks to everybody that has purchased my masterclass. Um, I'm going to extend that 50% off, so if you're interested, there's a link in the description. Really, really do appreciate that. Obviously, at the moment, that makes a really big difference to somebody like myself, where I can't do any workshops, which is a really big part of, of my revenue. But I'm, I'm lucky as well because I've got YouTube, um, and there's a lot of photographers that aren't as lucky as me, and I'm going to be doing a video about some of those in, in the next week or two as well. Okay, let's jump into this. So first of all, in color, the obvious one is white balance. It's the first thing that I change in, in my photos. And if we look at this photo here from Iceland from a month or so back, this was taken just around sunrise. And if you look at this image, it can look so much different depending on the white balance you apply. You could have that, or I've got it down quite cool. Now. Obviously, there's no right or wrong. I think it's probably better if it's because it's taken near the blue hour that it's that it's cooler. But there's nothing to say that you couldn't have it like that. But what I like to do is is try and get it right, the white balance before I start doing the other edits. So if I look at another shot, um, this one here, this was taken about 40 minutes before that one. You can see there's no light on on the mountains in the background, and I've got a little bit cooler temperature on it. Now, one thing you might want to do is here I've got a graduated filter, and I've just you can see I've just added some tint onto it. So I've just added a little bit of purple tint. And you can see that the blue's slightly changing when I'm doing that. And I quite often do that and add a graduated filter just to a part of the image and change the tint or the temperature of that part of the image. And I've, there's lots of examples of me doing that. And I did a video all about it on this image here. So t check it out in the link. Okay, the next point. Actually, I should say, actually, I'm, I'm filming in here, but, um, I've got to share it with Anne, my, my, my wife, because she's obviously working from home. So um, that's why the table's missing from behind me, if you can, if you can just see here. My wife is just here, um, and I'm probably putting her off. So I've got to be quick. Got to do it in five minutes. Okay, on to the next one, which is HSL. So the hue, saturation, and luminance. You've probably seen me use this all the time. It makes a really big difference. What I want to do is show you that the the way I use it quite often in grass, because obviously in landscape photos there's grass, and I like to just tone that grass depending on the season and, and how I felt it was like in that particular season. So in these ones here from um, the Pharaohs, you can see if I go into the color and then this click this button here, and I would say that I'm doing it on an iPad, but the same things apply on the desktop Lightroom as well. Um, so you can see here that I, I can easily change the hue by clicking the yellow and the green grass in, in landscapes tends to be changed more by yellow than green, ironically. Um, so you can see, I, I don't want it like this orange color. I don't really want it luminous green, but I do want to make it a little bit greener. So I'm going to push it up there a little bit. And then similarly on this shot here, um, I, 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 I've you know increased it. And then on this one here, the blue C as well, um, I, I've increased the saturation. At the, you know, when I started, it wasn't that blue, but if I just zoom in, I can add some blue in there, and you can see that it's actually making quite a big difference as I change it. So the HSL slider can make a big difference. You can pick out individual colors within your image and really change them qu quite powerfully. Okay, onto the next one, which is split toning. Now I did a whole video on this with Mark Littlejohn, who's a super expert at, at it, and I'll link the video up here. Um, but I'll show you this image that I took in the Lake District um, a few weeks ago. And I've got more from the Lake District in, in my next Sunday two Sundays videos. Um, obviously they were recorded a long time ago. Um, they're gonna be my last ones from outside and until all, all, all this is over. So, so here's an image from, from the Lake District. I go into effects, I can go into split toning, 
And um, so I'll just take off all the split toning I've done on that particular image. And this is how it was as I took it. And I might want to say, okay, I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna make the shadows a bit cooler and the highlights a little bit warmer. And you can do all sorts of effects. So this is an, another one that I did where I've you know, reduced the saturation of the colors, but not all the colors. And then this is one where I've added sort of a, a more moody, atmospheric um, look to the image with split toning. It's really good. It's a really good way of playing with your, with your photos. I'm gonna tell you about a competition as well at the end of the video where you can enter some of your color, color edits. Okay, the next two things are, are not so obvious. So the first one is contrast. So if I go into this image here, is a really good example of, of something where you might want to change the contrast um, within the image, but it also has an impact on the saturation. So, for instance, if I change the contrast of just the, say, the bottom part of this image, if I just click on this filter here, now I've already changed it a little bit, I've reduced it a little bit, but if I increase the, the contrast of this, you can see that it's also increasing the saturation of the blue color, like quite significantly. You can see it makes quite a big difference to that. So that's a good way of bringing out saturation as well as changing contrast, or it's a good way to think about what contrast does to your images and does to the color of your images, because that contrast also increases the saturation of your images. And then the other one is curves. So curves is a really good way of changing things in your image. So if I just go to this image here, so then what you can do is in this image, I've got the general curve on it, but I can go and just change the curve for individual colors, red, green, or blue. So if I go to red, I can then say, okay, I'm just want to, I just want to increase the highlights um, of, of the red colors within this image. So I might just put a couple of points there just to stop these moving. And then I'm just going to increase the highlights. And can you see how the sky is getting a little bit warmer there? You've got to be a little bit careful with this. You don't want to overdo it but it can make a, you know, it can, it can have a big impact on just certain color colors, the red, the green, or the blue in your image. And then finally, I just wanna mention something which is called camera calibration, which is right down at the bottom in the desktop version of Lightroom, and I often play with that as well. What you've gotta remember on that is that RGB is affecting the red, green, or blue component of each individual pixel. So it has an impact across the whole board, but you can create some really nice effects in it, as I'm showing here on, on whilst I'm editing this on, on something that I was playing with earlier. Um, and then also just toning the shadows as well is a really good way of doing it, similar to how you split tone, but this is affecting um, all the pixels within, within the image. So there's some top tips. I hope they've been helpful. And um, I'll be doing one of these every week. It's not gonna be the same day every week, so make sure you click the bell icon below if you wanna get notified when I upload one. And obviously I'll be doing my Sunday videos as well. And I've got two really exciting ones that I can release from the Lake District, as I mentioned before, over the next two, two weeks. But if you've got any ideas for these five in five, then drop them in the comments below. I really, really appreciate it. And also check out my masterclass as 50% off. And the offer code is at home 50. <laughs> okay, thanks ever so much for watching. And until Sunday, bye. We say